Hey there and welcome back. This is the second video in our single sign-on series with OAuth in Payload. Now, a lot of people have been waiting for this video since today I'm not only going to show you how you can sign in an existing user with OAuth, but also how you can sign up a new user, which is probably the most important feature. Now, just a small agenda for today. We have three main sections. First, we're going to set up OAuth for the admin collection again, but this time including sign up. There's also a few changes in the plugin. Secondly, we're going to set up multiple collections with different OAuth configurations. So we will have one admin users collection and one normal application users collection. So for your front end application, which will both use OAuth and then we will also allow those users to create accounts through OAuth. Now there have been a few changes to the plugin. So first of all, it has changed its name. It's now called AuthSmith um, or the Payload Auth plugin from AuthSmith. Um, I think you still install it with the same command, which is pnpm install payload auth plugin, but it now has two parts. First, the admin auth plugin and also the app auth plugin. And the names are pretty um, you know, self-explanatory. One is for admin users and the other one is for application users. Now there have also been a few other structural changes that we will walk through in a minute. Now, just a quick recap regarding data structure. If we enable OAuth for a user collection, so let's take the admin users in our case, which have these lucky users, the OAuth data that we need to store to the user is not stored directly in the user document, but separately in another collection that the plugin automatically creates, which we will call admin accounts. And this is because one user can actually have multiple admin accounts because every admin account is tied to one OAuth authentication method. So you might have one user with one email, but he might be able to sign in with Google or GitHub or Apple, etc. All right, so I have created a default boilerplate payload project that we're going to use to implement OAuth. The first thing that I'm going to do is do pnpm install payload auth plugin so we can use it later. Now, before we can activate it, I need to create a new collection that I will call admin accounts. I will paste in a code snippet here. And by the way, the plugin has a great documentation that walks you through all steps as well. So I will link to it in the description below. Now you don't have to just create a normal collection here. What the plugin actually gives you is a function called with admin account collection that will pretty much do anything. The only thing you have to set is your slug. So in this case, we can set it to admin accounts, or if you want, you can just keep it lowercase with a dash connected. So this is all we have to do to set up this collection. Next, we need to add the plugin to our payload configuration. So I'm going into my payload config file and under plugins, I'm just removing the payload cloud plugin because we don't need it in this case. And I'm going to paste in our admin auth plugin. Remember, since we add um, OAuth to the admin users collection and it's meant for the admin panel, we use the admin auth plugin. I can just import that automatically. What I also need to import is our OAuth provider. So depending on the provider you want to use, you need to import the Google OAuth provider or the GitHub OAuth provider. I'm just going to walk you through everything using Google. Now, as you can see here, we need to specify a collection slug for the accounts collection. So I'm just going to reference the collection that we just created, admin accounts slug. And obviously what I also have to do is add the admin accounts here. Now this is the flag that you need to set if you want to allow a sign up or not. So by default, if you leave it out, it is set to false. So users will be able to sign in, but not sign up using OAuth. And with admin users, this might actually be the behavior that you're looking for, because if you allow a sign up, 
all people, no matter if they belong to your company or not, will be able to just sign up by default. Last part is the providers. Um, the only thing that we need here is the client ID and the client secret from our OAuth provider. Now, I will link to the last video because there we actually go to the Google Cloud Console and set up the client ID and client secret. So I already have them set up and stored in my environment variables. Last but not least, before we get started, the plugin also requires you to set a server URL. So in here, I need to specify server URL and set it to process.env.nextPublicServerURL. It's important that it's next public because our sign-in button actually needs to access this server URL in order to redirect you. So if you don't set it to next public, it won't be available um, to the sign-in button and the plugin will not work. Quick side note here, if you're creating your OAuth application to get your OAuth client ID and client secret, you need to whitelist certain callback URLs. Now for the admin um, part, this will be example.com. So in our case on localhost, this will be HTTP um, localhost 3000 slash API slash admin slash OAuth callback Google. If you don't whitelist this callback URL, you will get an error as soon as you try to authenticate. Let us now add the sign in button that will actually appear below the default payload login that lets us authenticate with Google. I'm just going to create a new folder called components. And in there, I'm going to paste my auth button. It is a very simple component though. First, in order to get rid of those type errors, we would need to install the payload CMS UI library. It will work without installing it, but if you want to get rid of those errors, you need to install it. Secondly, um, this is pretty much all that you need to do in order to have the Google sign-in handled. Now, the plugin gives us a nice function that we can call called signin.oauth. It is a little bit different than in the previous video because now the plugin is more geared towards a more general auth solution and they will probably add multiple other providers as well. So the only thing it returns is a button that says sign in with Google that then handles the Google sign in. To show this below the login screen, we have to go back into our payload config and under admin, we have to specify components. And then after login, which is an array, and this is not correct, this just autocomplete because we have to supply the um, file path directly. So we have to say components and then auth button. And I think it's a named export. So we have to put a hash after that auth button. Now, what we should do and uh, as well is regenerate our import map. So I'm going to say pmpm install, sorry, not pmpm install, pmpm payload generate import map just to make sure that this custom component is actually included in our admin URI. And I see I get an issue uh, missing or invalid server URL, which I have set. So let me check my environment variables. Ah, so I haven't set my credentials yet. So I will have to do next public server URL and set it to HTTP localhost 3000. So let's run that again and see if the error is gone. Yes, it is gone. Apart from this, I'm now just pasting in my Google provider client ID and client secret. Don't worry, I will go ahead and delete this before the video is released. So don't try anything. Um, but yeah, apart from this, we should be ready to go. So let's start our development server and see if it already works. So I open up my application on the slash admin. And before we can start, we obviously need to create a first user. I'm just going to call it dev at allaboutpayload.com with a simple password. And I'm going to click on create. Now, as you can already see, we have our admin accounts, our users and media. 
So I just need to log out if I can manage to hit that button. Yeah. And now, as you can see below our login screen, we actually see sign in with Google. So let's click on this and I have to sign in really quick. But as soon as I'm logged in, it will prompt me to confirm the sign in. Now it's saying here you're signing back into this application because I've already been signed in. So I'm just going to click on continue. And now we're in the admin panel. And if we check our users, we not only have our all about payload user, but also myself as an OAuth user. We can also see under admin accounts, my account here, which contains all the OAuth information that payload needs. So let's continue by setting up a second users collection, so-called platform users that will also support OAuth. Like I said, this collection is meant to be used for application users. There are users of your platform that don't have access to the admin panel, which would be reserved for, let's say, your internal team. But those application users would just be, you know, normal day-to-day -day users of, let's say, your SaaS platform, for example. Now, I've already added a few files to my code base. Most importantly, one page called auth in my front end. That is very simple. Again, it just has a sign in button. Now this could be your login page um, on your platform or whatever. The key part here is it performs an OAuth sign in, a Google app sign in. And if that is successful, it will push and redirect to the homepage. So in your case, that could be your protected account page. If there's an error, it will just show the error. Apart from that, I have also created a lib file with an auth, sorry, a lib directory with an auth file in there, which just contains uh, three functions for us to, first of all, do this Google app sign in. Again, it's just, you know, signing in using Google. Then the get user function, which allows us to fetch a current user and also a refresh function to refresh the current token. Now, before we can use this configuration, there's a few steps we need to take. The first is generating a new secret for the plugin to use. So I'm going to generate a new environment variable called app auth secret. And if you want to easily generate a secure token, you can run this command openssl rent base 64 32. If you click enter, this will give you a secure token that you can just paste in here for a plugin to use. Next up, we need to create two collections. The first one is our actual app users. And the second one is our app accounts, or sorry, our app user accounts, similar to the admin accounts here. So I'm going to create a new collection, uh, sorry, here called app users dot TS. And I'm going to paste in the code snippet. Again, you can find this in the official documentation of the plugin, which I will link in the description. This is a very simple collection config, app users. Now, this is a utility function that the plugin actually provides us with. Remember, it's not with admin users account, the thing that we had here, this is something else. It's with app users collection, which just makes sure that everything is set up properly. You can also add this hook, which is optional, but makes sense, that deletes all linked accounts in the app accounts collection that we will create in a second, if a user is deleted. Now, as I just said, we still need to create this app accounts collection. So I will create a new file called app accounts.ts. I will paste in a configuration here. Now this again is very similar to the admin accounts configuration. The only thing we have to change is the import here because that is not correct. We have to import the app users from the same directory. So this just initializes um, the separate accounts collection, but for our app users. Let's move on to adding the plugin to our payload configuration. I'm going back into my payload config file and here below our admin auth plugin, I'm going to add this app auth plugin as I would with just a separate plugin. 
So I just have to import it here. It's imported from the same plugin. I already imported the Google Auth provider, so that is not an issue. Now, as you can see here, we're still missing something. So that is the actual name we need to give the app auth plugin because we can, in theory, have multiple of those apps that need their individual name so that the plugin knows where to perform the authentication on. I'm just going to call this app. And as you can see, this needs to be the same thing as here in our auth file. We specify an app client with a name of app. So this one needs to match whatever you want to use here. So let's start our development server again. And let's see if this already works. So I'm going back here. I'm going to refresh the page on localhost 3000 slash auth. I'm going to click on sign in with Google. And it doesn't work. It says access block. This app request is invalid. If you check the error message, it says redirect URI mismatch. And that is because we haven't yet configured or I haven't yet configured um, a correct whitelisted URI for the callback redirect for our app users. So if we go back into that readme here that I created for the app one, it's our app URL. So in this case, HTTP localhost 3000 slash API, then app name, which would just be, again, if we go back here, it's just app. So we say API app OAuth callback Google. Now this is the one that we need to copy. Obviously, if you also have a production environment, don't forget to whitelist that production environment, otherwise it won't work. So I will just add this callback URL to Google and then we can try again. In case you haven't noticed yet, this obviously needs to be localhost 3000, otherwise it won't work. So I just added this callback URL and I'm going to refresh and restart my development server. And I will reload the auth page. So let's try signing in with Google. And it seems like it actually worked. So as you can see here, it redirected us to localhost 3000. Now I didn't get any prompt on my account in Google since I already authenticated this app. Now, usually you will get the uh, usual confirmation. Do you really want to sign in? Then you click continue and then you're here. So let's just check in a private window because now we're logged in here. So we'll open up a private window. I will go to localhost 3000 slash admin. I will just log in with my uh, admin account here and check if we actually created an app user. And voila, here you can see we have an app user. It doesn't have a name, but it just has an email. This might be a topic for a separate video, how you can transfer multiple information and get you know more information from actual Google users. But the important part is our email. And um, yeah, that's how you can support sign in, sign up for application users in your payload application. Before I forget, if we check app accounts, by the way, you can also see my Google app account here, which is then linked to my app user. Now, this will be it for today's video. If you do have any questions about the specific implementation, feel free to ask them in the comments below and we will try to help you out as best as we can. Apart from that, I would estimate that this will not be the last video in this series because there's a lot more to talk about, a lot more detail we can cover um, maybe different providers or different auth plugins because there are multiple ones that you can use and depending on your use case, it might make sense to maybe choose another one or to even do your own implementation. So if you want us to go into detail about anything specific, let us know. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.